we're going to um, we're going to learn about more about the state of uh, of SaaS integration. Uh, Gertian, welcome. Thank you, John. Thanks for uh, inviting us. So, if you just like to share your screen. Yep. Great. Just did. I will. I will lead you to it. All right. Uh, so today we're going to talk about API standardization and the state of SaaS integration. So I am Gertian de Wilde, CEO and co-founder at APIDEC. I'm passionate about uh, API, SaaS, data, and serverless in general. At APIDEC, we help developers build uh, integrations into their products uh, and by delivering better connected experiences. Uh, so SaaS integration is one of the daily topics we experience, so I'm happy to talk about it today. The topics that we will cover are the SaaS integration trends, API standardization and integration strategies. Uh, one of the first trends we are observing in the market is a continuing expansion of SaaS applications. SaaS is growing faster than ever. Uh, marketing technology alone grew by 30.6% in 2020, up to a total of 8,000 applications, which is huge. Uh, in total, across all categories, you see uh, today 175,000 companies active in SaaS which are a lot of uh, integrations to build if you want to integrate with all of them, of course. Uh, we've seen the continuing trend of bigger integration ecosystems, 2020 mark the year that both Slack and Zapier reached 2,000 integrations, and Shopify even has like more than 5,000. Um, we also see that companies are using more and more SaaS applications within their organizations, and that even grew by 30% year over year. Uh, for SMBs, the average, uh, the average amount of applications used is 105 apps. For SMEs, it's 137, and enterprises, it's at 288. Um, something that's very clear right now is that integrations are no longer optional. Uh, customers expect integrated solutions are looking for ways to also import the data much quicker, uh, which also creates a lot more challenges for SaaS companies to build new integrations into their products and to integrate with a lot more APIs at the same time. Uh, the ROI of integrations is, of course, positive. Integration usage increases. Also, the stickiness of your product, which is super important, and more activated integration per customer also results in a higher customer lifetime value, sometimes up to 300%. So that's, that's a lot of um, potential by offering integration and also getting customers to connect as much integrations as possible uh, so they're connecting with their current stack. 31% um, of SaaS companies is actually listing an API at the moment on their websites or through a developer portal, where 25% of those companies are also offering one or more SDKs. SaaS companies are finally investing in APIs like products, which is uh, very important. The strategic, of, uh, strategic importance of APIs has been proven APIs are not just an extension of the product anymore, uh, which uh, is, uh, is a good trend, in my opinion. Uh, now we will talk a bit more about API standardization in general and how you can use that to build better integrations. Uh, you have API specifications. Most of us use them on a daily basis. You now have the open API specification, which is a clear winner in the market and is rapidly gaining wide adaptation within companies, which also is resulting in more standardization and better tooling for developing and managing APIs. Uh, 
Uh, also, another one to watch out for is the async API. It's a little brother of the open API, but focused towards event-driven architectures. And they actually announced a partnership with Postman yesterday, which even will give them more exposure and more adoption within the market. Sally, only less than 5% is making their specs publicly available, um, which is something that can be improved. If you look at uh, companies like Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, and Stripe, they all believe in the power of open API specs by making them publicly available on their websites and also on GitHub, which make, enables them to get a lot more feedback around their specifications. So developers can also use it to improve their workflows uh, internally by relying on those APIs. Uh, this is also the tr driving the trend of contract-driven dri development, where you can use uh, an API description uh, to uh, configure your API gateway for testing purposes, analytics and monitoring, uh, for powering your developer portal, creating and generating SDKs, uh, design governance within the company and versioning, and um, creating interactive documentation. API tooling is also um, quickly maturing. We see uh, companies, uh, companies growing at a daily rate where you see new entrants within the market. One of the uh, nice examples created by Medib, one of the founders of APIs days is the API landscape where you see now more than four companies being listed. So that gives you a lot of tools and apps to work with to improve your API workflows. Um, Postman is also gaining a lot in popularity. You will see the run in Postman button on a lot of different developer documentations uh, and API references, which makes it one of the most popular ways to share your APIs and to remove friction to test APIs very quickly. So that's also awesome trend to see. Uh, to REST or to GraphQL, um, we see companies, most of the APIs out there at the moment are REST-based APIs, but we also see now new GraphQL APIs entering the market where companies like GitHub and Shopify invest in hybrid strategies serving a broader developer audience by having both an GraphQL and REST API. You also see unified APIs and aggregators that are gaining traction, uh, which enables SaaS companies to easily add integrations to their products. Uh, we are one of them, but besides this, you have Cloud Elements, Plaid, Messages, Argyle, identity and a bunch more. So this is also a new way for companies to easily build integrations and add new APIs to their products. Uh, we're seeing that customers love integration platforms like Zapier, and they're an easy way to um, act as a distribution channel also, as an additional distribution, and can help you meet the actual demand for more long tail integrations you're not planning to support in the short term. So partnering with those integration platforms is certainly uh, uh, a tactic to, uh, to research and to also embed within your broader integration strategy. We also see the trend of API first companies and headless technologies that are on the rise, uh, making it easier to extend your app with new functionality for a fraction of the cost. Uh, we ourselves are a prime example of that, where we're using Keynote IoT at Analytics Search product, uh, Algolia to power search, subscription billing can be part to Stripe, adding messaging can be done through Twilio, and adding identity management to your application can be handled through a platform like Alt Zero. And uh, now we will discuss integration strategies and how a hybrid strategy can help you move faster as a company and says product. Why invest in an integration strategy? Uh, smart integration 
SAGE lowers your total cost of ownership by saving valuable engineering resources to focus on your core product. Uh, some tips we have is having a mix of, a mix of both native and third-party powered integrations, leveraging unified APIs, of course, uh, be present on integration platforms and use technographics to identify potential integration partners that should be part of your roadmap. How to attract developers to your API? Offer as a case, invest in a developer portal, uh, documentation and API reference are the basics, providing sample projects that they can fork uh, and that you're hosting on GitHub where they can just start playing with it around and using their API keys. Focus on and obsess around developer experience to try to bring the best developer experience uh, to the market. Having a basic integrations page and marketplace to give more visibility to the companies and developers building uh, on top of your APIs and platform. Uh, API management and hosting developer and partner events on Twitch or YouTube. Uh, one of the examples that we uh, like to use is Stripe, of course. They have an awesome sample page where you can just see real life use cases, how to implement their APIs. And Twilio is also uh, very good at that, where you can just start working with their APIs and playing around uh, and see immediate value. So that's super important when you're delivering and opening up samples to the market. Uh, DevRel is also changing, certainly now with COVID-19, where you will see more and more streaming happening in the market and where uh, platforms like Shopify, they will join Twitch and where they will do different talks about API deprecation and tutorials, how to use their APIs and how to use the Shopify platform as a developer. 2021 predictions, what will 21 have in store for us? Uh, more and more embedded workflow automation. We already have seen it now uh, in 2020, where you see Intercom, Slack, all announcing workflow builders within their products, which will enable you to orchestrate uh, integrations to their platforms without leaving, needing to lead, leave a platform like Slack where you can just trigger different events within all the tools you have connected with Slack. Financial services are also starting to make an entrance in SaaS. Uh, we see more embedded finance by SaaS companies offering bank accounts, credit cards, lending and financing products. Uh, just last week, Stripe announced their treasury product, which enables you to do offer lending within your product and financing. And QuickBooks also announced the credit card and bank account. And you will see more and more of that in 2021. Uh, cloud compute models are also changing uh, with uh, service entering the market. It's already been there a while, but you see that it's more and more adopted by companies, wide adoption. And you see that uh, AWS and other major cloud providers are really investing in their serverless uh, products, which also enables us as developers and companies to have a higher development velocity and to deliver more scalable APIs in a shorter time. Compliance and privacy conscious, conscious uh, APIs are, of course, something mainly driven by regulation like CCPA and GDPR. And API documentation will pay more and more attention to privacy controls and the data being handled through those APIs by tagging PII and adding more privacy first features. Uh, as discussed, data privacy regulation like GDPR, GDPR, CCPA will drive the need for observability and also audit logs across all API calls, which Guillaume also discussed in his previous talk. So you will see more and more uh, companies starting to pay attention to this to solve this 
piece of the puzzle. Certainly, uh, as you see, that the complexity of handling a bunch of APIs is becoming more and more important, also from a regulation perspective. No code and low code was already very hot this year, and it will uh, continue to be hot next year. Uh, and that's mainly driven also by the need for customized SaaS products where customers are really looking for more customizability. So it will also become a very important category to integrate with down the line. And 2021 will be a year where we see more and more growth in that category. So key takeaways are we're still in the early days of SaaS. Uh, it's going to continue to grow. Invest in open API specs as a company. Um, focus on developer experience. Use a hybrid integration strategy to scale out your integrations and to support more APIs as a SaaS company. Thanks for listening and I would be happy to uh, answer your questions. Thank you. Uh, GJ, thanks, thanks very much for, uh, for, for sharing those, those perspectives. I think uh, similar to the, uh, how we kicked off the, the track with, uh, with Guillaume's presentation, it's clear that a lot of companies are able to uh, accelerate their go-to-market by consuming other people's APIs. And they're also um, should be thinking about how, um, how how they can expose their services to other firms, so that they can um, uh, so that, so that they can help extend their their reach and range. I think um, so. So the implication of this then then is you don't necessarily need to know everything there is um, to to build every component uh, of the of the customer journey, but uh, one. A developing uh, core skill is now being able to select the different components from the different services and within your organization being able to um, uh, to put to assemble those uh, those building blocks is that that a, a fair comment yeah that's a fair comment and the composability of apis is uh, is very attractive and it's baked into apis so you can just pick and choose whatever you need and you can uh, use whatever building block to, to start replacing internal resource and really focus on your core development because everything is getting commoditized feature-wise. So you can just select a few best of breed vendors and that can enable you to move much quicker as a company. And it can be both uh, integrations, can be identity management, can be payments. So everything is getting uh, productized from an API perspective. So it's super interesting to be a, a product builder or a SaaS founder at this time because time to market to build new products is faster than ever. And it, that's, that's super interesting for everyone and it will drive a lot of growth within SaaS overall. Thanks very much, uh, TJ, for your uh, perspective. Uh, learned a lot. Thank you, John. Uh, happy for the invite and uh, thank you.